All right, so today I wanna to talk about a book series that I have really enjoyed over the past few years, and that is The Land of Stories by Chris Colfer. Now, I first knew of Chris Colfer, like a lot of people, by watching Glee, but even though I stopped watching after about season three, when I heard his name attached to this particular storyline, I was really interested. Uh, the premise of the books really intrigued me and knowing that he was the one that wrote it, especially knowing some of the other writing he had done, I was really interested. You see, the premise for these stories is two regular everyday brother and sister end up falling into the land of stories, which takes all of the fairy tales we know and love and puts them all in one land living together. Being the fairy tale fanatic that I am, I love the idea of putting all of my favorite fairy tales in one location and kind of tipping them a little bit on their head, doing things with them that have never been done before. I love Once Upon a Time and what they've done and how they've developed characters to being more than the two-dimensional that we've seen in all the books and movies up to this point. It, it's nice that there's been able to be time taken throughout a TV series and a book series to allow characters to really develop into full uh, multi-dimensional people. Uh, another reason I really like this book series so far is because I've seen Chris Colfer's you know, writing process develop. The first book is a fantastic story, but it's it can easily be a very standalone piece. And to be fair, at the time, he did not know what what was in store for his stories. He goes on record a number of times saying he never never really knew that it was going to be as big as it has become, and deservedly so. But the, the first book is, is very much intact and a complete story. It has more than one storyline, but they're very, they're very clean cut, and you know what's happening exactly in one and another. Uh, as the series progresses in books two and three, Colfer delves more into having multiple storylines going on at once and not always completing something before switching back to another storyline. He leaves a lot of open ends and cliffhangers, which I personally love as a reader. I was very lucky that I wasn't able to actually read Grim Morning until right before the fourth book came out this summer. And so I only actually had to wait four days in between finishing Grim Morning and beginning Beyond the Kingdoms, which thank goodness because the cliffhanger at the end of book three threw me for a loop. Uh, and I was really excited to get a hold of Beyond the Kingdoms. Another great reason this book series needs to be read and Colfer even thanks teachers in the process is that it gives teachers a new way of bringing these stories to kids these days um, who you know, their world is a lot more in their face with Facebook and Twitter and the internet. It's, it, we're kidding ourselves if, it's, if we think it's the same as when we grew up. Uh, and I've found that a lot of young children these days don't get fairy tales and get to hold these fairy tales with uh, the love and compassion and the morals that I feel I did. So having them be twisted a little bit and throwing them all together is a nice brand new and fresh way to introduce these stories to a whole new generation of audiences. I was lucky enough to read the very first land of stories to my class and it I think it was even more of a joy for me still because I got I, you know I'm reading as the evil queen I'm reading as Cinderella I'm reading as Red Riding Hood and I have a very apt audience listening to me but the students got completely into the book. They wanted to know what happened next. They started formulating ideas of what they thought was going to happen. You know, it's everything that as a teacher you want kids to do with a book. You want them to get invested and involved and, you know, draw their own conclusions. Some of the ideas the students came up with would have even been great sequels, I think. And the one day we actually, we looked up the covers for Grim Warning and Beyond the Kingdoms. Uh, and before I put it up on my white, uh, my smart board, I got really excited because Beyond the, the Kingdoms has on the cover, you know, Merlin from The Legend of King Arthur. It has Robin Hood, it has Peter Pan, and it has Alice in Wonderland, which are four stories that hold a very special spot in my heart. Uh, I have memories of doing a version of Alice in Wonderland with 
friends I've had my entire life. Peter Pan has always had special connections in, in numerous ways, and Robin Hood and King Arthur stories are ones I've always shared uh, with my mom and dad, and I think every version I've ever found, especially of Robin Hood and King Arthur, I've made sure I watched with my dad, and it, they're always very special. So getting to, getting to see Colfer's twist on those stories was very interesting. Um, I love Chris Colfer's books for not just young students, but for adults as well. They challenge us to, to look at the things going on in our lives and, you know, evaluate the seriousness of them. He, he doesn't shy away from things that, that kids are experiencing and adults can follow those feelings too. In the first book you learn very quickly that both Alex and Connor's father has passed away and they're having to deal with that. It's, it's only been a year but it still really affects them which is something, loss is something that we can all connect to and we've all experienced. And he does it in such an honest and, and beautiful way that it, it helps you really connect with both Alex and Connor. I know some of the other things Alex goes through, like feeling out of place and, you know, being being really smart in school but not not really doing well and making strong friendships is something I can definitely relate to, especially at the age she's at in in the books. And that's another thing I think that all audiences, young or old, will connect with. And as the series goes on, I don't want to spoil it for anyone who hasn't read the first book or the second or third or fourth yet, but as the series continues, Colfer continues to, you know, have his, I guess, real life characters go through things that everyone does um, and deals with things like love, loss, adapting to the situations that you find yourself in, pressure, uh, expectation just because half of it's set in a fantastical world with characters we know and love doesn't mean that these characters don't experience the things that we do and I think Colfer does it in a way that really brings it home and makes the characters relatable and I think that's another reason why his series is so successful and finally I just I want to say that I think it's fantastic I watched an interview that Chris Colfer did um, and he said in it that he wasn't a reader, he hated the books that teachers were, he felt shoving down his throat. Um, and so I think he can be very proud of the fact that he has created a book series that gets kids excited about reading. Uh, I had a lot of students go out and search for the second book and were reading it before we even finished the first book, which in my mind doesn't make sense and as a reader that doesn't make sense to me but you know they're excited so yeah read uh, for Chris Colfer it was Harry Potter and I am sure at some point there will be a video on here about Harry Potter because <laughs> I love it as well but I think he should be really proud uh, that he's been able to create that same experience that he felt with Harry Potter um, for new, new children with the land of stories